Hello and welcome back to 4 Minutes. This week claims that the government's opt-in proposal could be challenged legally. But more on that later, first is your weekly news roundup. The Industry Super Network has announced a new national advertising campaign to inform members about the intra-fund advice service available through their superannuation funds. ISN Chief David Whiteley said a crisis of confidence existed in the financial planning industry and that the scaled advice service through Super was necessary for members. FBA Chief Mark Rantel responded, saying people needed to be encouraged to seek holistic financial advice, not just advice around Super. Many investors are unaware that advisors can help with SMSFs and it could be due to the name, according to Head of Wealth Management at HLB Manjard Sydney, Michael Hutton. Hutton said the title Self-Managed Super Fund suggested that those who have such a fund must do all the investment themselves, proposing the name be changed to Personal Super Fund. ASIC has announced this year's shadow shopping exercise targeting retirement advice, which the regulator said will also include intra-fund advice. Research released by Centric Wealth found over half of Australia's millionaires want financial advice and are willing to pay for it. The report has revealed that high net worth clients have spent $2 billion on financial advice last year, including $1.1 billion on primary investment advice. The Foreign Investment Review Board stated it had no objections to Japanese insurer Dai Ishii's acquisition of Tower Australia by way of a scheme arrangement. And AMP has announced AXA Asia Pacific minority shareholders would receive an equivalent of $6.43 per share for the merger of the two businesses. In this week's appointments, Equity Trustees has promoted Philip Gallagher to head up its private client's wealth management business, while Managing Director of Treasury Group Mark Burgess has resigned following his appointment to the Future Fund Management Agency. And finally, an e-financial careers survey revealed financial professionals were happiest with the bonuses they were paid last year, with an average bonus of $39,195, representing a 13% increase over the previous year. In this week's Money Management, Caroline Munro reports on calls for the advice industry to adopt the new thinking regarding female clients. Chris Kennedy looks at Guardian's newly announced plans. And legal experts claim the government's opt-in proposal would clash with the current contract law. We spoke to the FBA Deputy Chief, Dean Sanders. This is an unprecedented step for a government to step into the relationship between a profession and their client. It's unusual in co most professions are regulated by contract and this, this certainly steps over the idea of that. And as to, the, as to how it impacts in relation to contract, we expect at this stage, without in the absence of seeing anything in writing it from the government specifically in law as to the opt-in, that it is intended to cut across um, any contracts that might be developed um, or the relation, any ongoing relationships that exist for a client. It certainly forms part of our key package of, of rec recommendations to government that we want them to understand the potential and give real consideration to the potential contract law implications that arise from this. Um, the cost obviously in terms of the, delivering the, the ongoing services, the administration impacts for clients but, and almost most, also most significantly the consumer detriment issues that might arise from contract um, avoidance as part of that ongoing process. For all the details on those stories, see tomorrow's issue of Money Management. Thank you for joining us this week. Bye for now.